Allow me to share my screen. There we go. Okay, one card. Okay, one card, one card, one card. I want to go back to. Okay, so we did this one, and what we're talking about two actions in the past. It's done differently in Spanish than it is in English. In English, you use the past progressive. In Spanish, you use the imperfect. Okay, now physical sensations and mental and emotional actions are not bound by frequency or time. Okay, it's not bound by frequency or time. They express or describe a state of being. Therefore, they are continuous. So when you're talking about physical sensation or mental emotional actions, right, you're not saying it starts at one o'clock and it ends at 105. Once again, please excuse the noise at 105. Okay, they are not bound by either frequency or time. They describe or express a state of being and that state of being is continuous. And that's what the imperfect is. It's not so much the time and when it began and when it ended, it's talking about an action over time, right? So there's certain verbs in Spanish that are only, no, I shouldn't say only used. Most of the time are used in the imperfect rather than in the preterite. So when you're normally expressing these verbs, and I'm, we're gonna look at the verbs, when you're normally expressing these verbs, they are normally in the imperfect rather than in the preterite. The highlighted verbs are those whose meanings change, their meaning changes in the preterite. So the meaning could have, could have one meaning in the imperfect, but that same verb in the preterite, the meaning changes. And one day we'll, and, and down the line, we'll look at how a verb in the preterite means one thing, and in the imperfect, it means something slightly different, sometimes a little bit more radical than slightly. So let's look at it. So these verbs, so remember if it's highlighted, the meaning is different in the preterite than it is in the imperfect. Usually the imperfect is the meaning that you normally would give to the past. It's the preterite whose meaning changes radically. But as I say, down the line, we'll talk about that. So these verbs, the following verbs are normally used only, normally, not only, normally in the imperfect. Esperar. Estar, amar, you should look at the difference between amar, which means to love, and querer, which means to love. It doesn't mean the same thing. We don't, once again, that's not an English speaker's normal reality, that there's two different verbs to say the same thing, but they mean different types of love. Okay, I say, when you're talking about whether I say frío, I say calor, I see a frío, I see a calor. Creer, which means to believe. Esperar means to hope or to wait. Estar means to be. Now, if you notice that's highlighted because it means to want or to love, but when it's in the preterite, it means something different. Conocer, conocer means to know, but not know in the sense of to know a fact, like to know someone or to know a place. Doler, gustar, llevarse bien con, to get along with, molestar, to bother, odiar, to hate, pensar in, to be thinking about. Now notice, poder and sentir mean something different in the imperfect than it means in the preterite. And like I said, we'll talk about that later on. And um, poder is to be able to, can. Sentir means either to regret or to feel sorry. Lo siento mucho. That means I'm very sorry. Sentirse means to feel. 
Okay, me siento mal, me siento bien. Okay. So with so in this tape and this video, we were looking at verbs that are normally used in the imperfect. That does not mean they are never used in the um, preterite, but normally you see them in the imperfect. And we gave an ex and here are some of the verbs. If they're highlighted, that means their meaning is different in the preterite than in the imperfect. Esperar, estar, amar, hace, querer, creer, querer, conocer, doler, gustar, llevarse bien con, molestar, odiar, pensar en, poder, sentir, sentirse. Let me see if I want to do the other card with uh, this, or maybe I'll do a different card. No, I think, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe, let, 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 let's see. Would and could, we talked about this before, but here is much more formal. Would and could, when used to express an habitual, an habitual action in the past, but not when it's used to express the conditional or translated into the imperfect in Spanish. Tocaba la guitarra todos los días cuando era joven. Now you could translate that as I used to play the guitar every day when I was a child, or I would play the guitar every day when I was a child. I would play the guitar or I used to play. Now you can say uh, the would or the could, but could no, because it doesn't mean to be able to. And here's the translation. He would used to play the guitar every day when he was young. Okay, Holden, young. Not necessarily a child, but young. Cuando vivía en Francia, podía visitar a Juanita cada fin de semana. When I lived in France, right? And you lived there over a period of time. That's why it's Bibia, okay? You didn't say when I lived in France when I was young. Then I would win cuando Bibi in Francia, cuando era joven, okay? Pero when I lived in France, I could visit Juanita every day. Podía visitar, or I used to be able to visit Juanita every day. Here you're talking about using could, not as conditional, but as imperfect. Okay, so I want to just go back, go back. All right. So we're talking about physical sensations and mental and emotional actions are not bound by frequency or time. They express or describe a state of being. Verbs that represent that would be, as example, esperar, amar, querer, creer, doler, gustar. These verbs are normally used in the imperfect. The ones that are highlighted, when they're in the imperfect, they, mean, they have one meaning. It's usually the meaning that you are used to seeing with that verb. But when they are in the preterite, the meaning changes. It's the meaning, it would be maybe a secondary uh, meaning in English, maybe, okay. And we also talked about would and could because would and could in English has more than one meaning and, more, and, more, and used in more than one type of verb tense. Normally, when you think of would, you think of the conditional. When you think of could, you think of the conditional. But it's also what would be called the imperfect in Spanish. Tocaba la guitarra. I used to play the guitar, or I would play the guitar. Cuando uh, viví en Francia, podía visitar. I would be able to visit, or I could visit. We'll continue with the imperfect on other cards because it's a little bit different. So I don't want to mix up too much, you know, add too much to this. So welcome. So it's Corrala Ficklin. 
McLean at welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-N-E, welcome.com. Okay. Uh, I hope this has been of some help. A lot of these things, you're just going to have to read it again and again and again, eventually assimilate it so it begins to make sense and it becomes part of your common sense. If this has been of help, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. Okay. So thank you for visiting my site. Let me stop sharing. And I wish you a good day. Bye-bye.